I want to talk about uh, the antithesis of the DeFi world, the central bank world. So we had the Bank of England warning that crypto could cause 2008 level meltdowns. They issued this big warning in uh, in this talk. So the Bank of England's Dep Deputy Governor for Financial Stability, John Cunliffe, warned that cryptocurrencies could spark a global financial crisis unless tough regulations are introduced. I want to dive into and rip apart uh, so much of what was said here. Um, one big part that he mentioned, he said, Cryptocurrency, uh, crypto assets pose a financial stability concern since the majority have no intrinsic value and are vulnerable to major price corrections. He, he said a lot of things here. So there's a lot to unpack. I'm going to throw it to the group for your thought. Uh, you know, Zach, do you think that crypto could cause a 2008 level meltdown? And maybe I'll ask it in a loaded question kind of way, because it seems to me that there was a 2008 level meltdown and then crypto was invented as an out for people so they could safeguard their wealth because these mm. meltdowns happen by governments all the time. So it does seem to me like he's kind of inverted but I'll throw it to you after that loaded question right. was posed. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit that softball right out the park. <laughs> um, I think that this is uh, an awakening moment for people everywhere in positions of power. Uh, crypto is still fairly niche. Um, I forget the latest user metrics, but I don't think we're exactly at the point where it's going to cause a systemic failure in the, in the financial system. Um, but I think people are starting to wake up to the possibility that that could happen. And that's what we're hearing from central bankers the world over these days is thinking about the potentiality for that to occur. So whether or not it could cause a 2008 level financial meltdown at this point in time seems a bit much for me to believe. Um, whether that could be true in five, 10 years, maybe plausible. So they're trying to think about this stuff in those terms and trying to rein it in to the best of their ability because it does pose some ex existential questions to central bankers the world over, right? If they lose control of their money supply and the ability to pull the levers to make their economies work um, in the in the in the best interests of their constituents, we'll, we'll, ah. we'll grant them that. We'll grant them that here. Um, that is uh, p quite threatening to them. So they're trying to think about how um, to harness, curtail, or other the energy that's growing around cryptocurrency here in this place and time. But right now, I think this is certainly a prospective statement. We'll have to see a lot more adoption, a lot more uh, widespread usage of these things for uh, crypto to really circumvent the traditional financial system, in my personal opinion. But I will toss it back to you, Naomi, because I want to see you go in. I, well, I've got a lot to say, but I did see Jen's hand go up, so I'll, I'll oh, throw sorry. it over to you, Jen. I'll, I'll be super quick. I mean, reading this just... It just read like comments of someone who is so afraid of losing control to what Zach was saying. And and the comments felt like they they were said to really scare people who don't quite understand crypto yet, are trying to learn about it because it's something that they're hearing about. But but now there are these comments. And I just wanna I just wanna read one. The uh, uh Cunliffe said, if you if you build a better mousetrap, the world will beat a path to your door but it has to be a truly better mousetrap and not one that simply operates to lower standards or to no standards at all. And so these, these comments that he's making, there's no standards. There needs to be strict regulation or it's just not going to work. It's going to be pandemonium. Just feel like comments that are meant to scare people away from the space and to really keep a grip on that control. But I'm sure, Naomi, you have a lot to add to that. Well, let's start with the mousetrap comment because that's one of the most idiotic things I've heard because he's basically <laughs> saying if you build a better mousetrap, people will flock to you. But, you know, it can't be a less better mousetrap. So, like, what is he even saying here? Is he saying that, like, that if something's not offering genuine improvement, then no one will flock to it? Like, okay, so people won't flock to crypto. So what's the issue there? Like clearly crypto is providing value and people are moving to it because they see that value in it. So I don't even understand what he's trying to say with that better mousetrap analogy. It seems like he's missing the point. But let's dive into some of the other analogies he's made. He's talking about the subprime mortgage market prior to 2008. He's talking about the knock-on effects uh, that ultimately brought the global economy to its knees and saying that these uh, aspects are becoming prominent in the crypto space. Let's make no mistake about it. The 
subprime mortgage, mortgage market was completely propped up by the government. This wasn't a, a government enabled thing. Like, yes, we've all read the big short. Yes, we all know about how they, you know, repackage things and classify things incorrectly. Like that all played a role. But the government brought the punch bowl and the bankers got drunk. That is how it worked. They had all kinds of quotas. They were basically paying Fannie and Freddie to buy all of these, uh, you know, they had quotas, right, for the amount of subprime mortgages that these institutions had to be purchasing from banks. And banks had to meet those quotas or, you know, they wouldn't, you know, as part of the Community and Reinvestment Act, they weren't allowed to expand. They lost all kinds of privileges. So they had to keep issuing these mortgages, more and more subprime mortgages. And so this was something that the government was just fueling over and over. It was a crazy situation. And now he's saying like, well, we don't want it to happen like that. Like what, where, where the government screws something up? Like, yeah, we don't want that. That's why we have something from the private sector. That's why we have cryptocurrency. This is the solution, not the problem. You know, the 2008 meltdown, is it going to be caused by crypto? It, that is coming. That's coming because the government is printing exorbitant amounts of money. It's because the government is redistributing the wealth of the poorest people in our economy and just giving it to the coffers of all of the crony capitalist friends of politicians. That is why there's a meltdown coming and the poorest people are going to suffer. And crypto is an out for those people because it enables them a tool where they can safeguard their wealth. So Cunliffe is completely off base with all of this. It's crazy for me to continue to read this stuff. But then when he talks about, you know, crypto assets have no intrinsic value, like there's nothing backing gold, right? Gold is the asset. These people don't understand that cryptocurrency is the asset. These are the things that are providing value and people are valuing. So when they start saying things like that, it clearly, it shows that they don't understand why people are involved with crypto and the value that it presents. But Will, I'm going to throw it back to you. I feel like we should be rejoicing at this headline and not yeah. be getting so yeah. frustrated. Oh, this no, is, this I, is a good thing. The I beast agree. is scared. <laughs> The beast is scared. Fret not, Naomi. We are winning the war and things are getting better here. So that's all I agree. have to add. It's passion, it's passion, oh, it's not anger. It's, uh, I mean, we, okay. if we look at this situation, we do have crypto as a solution now. If we were seeing all of the things going on from, you know, monetary policy around the world, not just US government, but all kinds of governments around the world, including Central Bank in England, we would be horrified because we would be stuck into this system where the only way we can make digital payments is through these traditional financial payment rails, using their fiat currencies, using their sovereign currencies. We don't need to even be a part of that system anymore. And that's what so exciting. And I know I seem angry talking about this. I'm not angry. I'm just really passionate and so grateful that we finally have an out. And yes, it pro there probably is going to be a meltdown, but crypto is not the problem. Crypto is the solution.